in chemical reactions, we're not only going to see substances changing from one type to another, but we are going to see some energy changes as well. So we're going to look at those energy calculations, and there are two types of different um, reactions that could take place. It could either be endo or exothermic, those reactions. And the difference being, if it's endothermic, what's happening is that you have energy that enters the reaction, therefore it is endothermic. So it enters, it's taken in, it's absorbed. If it's exothermic, then that means that energy is going to be emitted or it exits the reaction. So it's released, it's emitted, it exits, therefore it's exothermic. When we work with these, we're going to be talking about units of joules, and that is abbreviated with capital J. What you're going to see in your calculations is you're going to see kilojoules instead of joules. But we all know that one kilojoule equals a thousand joules. And the cool part of these is that we are just going to treat these, these are just stoichiometric calculations, and you're always going to start with a balanced equation, which we'll see here in a second. So, starting with endothermic, energy is entering, so because it's entering, we're going to have some products that have more energy than what we started with. So that means that the, be the beaker or the flask that we touch is going to feel cold. The way you illustrate this is that your delta H, your heat that you're solving for, is always going to be a positive value when you have an endothermic reaction. Also remember, since it's entering, the way you would see that is that if this is our reaction, energy is entering, so we're going to see kilojoules written as a reactant because it's entering for endothermic. We're going to see the opposite for exothermic. Remember, exothermic means that energy is exiting. So because it's exiting, it's leaving, the reactants are going to have more energy than what you end up with, than your products. And so that means that when you touch that beaker or flask, it's going to feel hot to the touch. So when you solve for these, we're going to talk about heat, delta H. It is going to be a negative value. And if you were to look at this in a reaction, a plus B yields AB. Again, it's, it's exiting, so it's going to be written over here as a product, and that's how you would see your kilojoules. So now we get to our reactions, and again, the really good thing about this is you're, stoichiom you're, you're uh, going to do stoichiometry on this, but the reaction is spelled out for you. And the way you would look at this, this is telling me that for every two moles of ethane, that I combine with seven moles of oxygen, I'm going to be able to produce four moles of carbon dioxide, six moles of water, and 345 kilojoules of heat. Well, the question is, how much, that means grams, of ethane must be combusted to produce more than that, to produce 1,250 kilojoules of heat? Well, obviously, it's going to be more than two moles, and I'm just going to be able to convert my final answer to grams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. It doesn't ask me this, but I'm looking at this right here, and I'm asking myself, what type of reaction is this? And hopefully you guys are all answering. It is exothermic, meaning my delta H value is really a negative 345 kilojoules. That does not mean that you write in your... Um, your balanced equation, you don't write minus 345. It's always going to be a plus in your balanced equation, but your delta H value is a negative value for this. All that means is it tells you this. It's being produced. In other words, it is exiting. It's on the right-hand side of the equation. That's what that, if you were to just see a negative a delta H value that was negative, it's just telling you where on in your equation to put it. It's telling you to put it on the right-hand side. If I see it on the right-hand side, I know my delta H value is negative. So I've got everything set up, so now I can go ahead and write this down. I'm going to start with my kilojoules. I'm going to talk about signs here in a minute. 
Um, so suppose this is what you did. You started with your kilojoules because that's the value that you're given. Remember, this is the stuff from my equation now that I'm looking at to try and solve my problem. Starting with my kilojoules of heat. Well, I don't want it as kilojoules of heat. Ultimately, I want to find out some information about my, met my ethane. So I need to get rid of kilojoules and go to moles of ethane. So you should be thinking to yourself, yeah, I bet I can do this because I have a balanced chemical equation in front of me. I know that I've got two moles of ethane, and for every two moles of ethane that is combusted, I can produce 345 kilojoules of heat. So this is just like that mole ratio step, that mole to mole transition step. But instead of going mole to mole, you're going between mole and energy in this step. So that's the only difference, but you're still using your balanced chemical equation. So if we were to stop right now, we would have our answer as moles of ethane. That's not what we want. We want it as grams of ethane. And we know that one mole of ethane has a mass of 30 0.08 grams. Now, right now, what's going to happen is you're going to go through and you're going to calculate, and three significant figures, you're going to get this answer, 218 grams of ethane. We talked at the beginning here about delta H values. Right here, we said delta H is going to be negative because we've got an exothermic reaction. So really a better habit to get into, and whenever you're, let me step back for a second, because all it asked us to do was to calculate amount. So we're calculating mass. We know that's going to be a positive value. There's no question about that. It's not going to be a negative mass. It's going to be a positive mass. But if we plugged in our signs correctly from the beginning, and this will be helpful for like the next problem that we have, if we plugged it in correctly from the beginning, we would say, hey, we want to get 1250 kilojoules to exit. So that's a negative value. And my balanced equation tells me that 345 kilojoules exit. So these two negatives cancel out and you get the positive value of 218 grams. So there is your answer. But it really would have been more accurate if you want to just play with the signs and always do it that way. We know that that's, those would be negative values. Let me show you where that really comes into play. Next one. It says, how much heat is emitted? Well, I'm going to go over here to kilojoules and I'm going to say question mark kilojoules. When I start with 10 grams of aluminum and react with more than enough of that iron 3 oxide for this to take place. So now I'm going to start with my 10 grams of aluminum. I'm going to get rid of my grams of aluminum and I'm going to go to moles of aluminum. Doesn't matter what that coefficient is right there. I don't play with that right now. I'm just going to say one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98 straight from the periodic table. So I've got it as moles of aluminum. I want to ultimately get from here over to here. So I get rid of my moles of aluminum and go to my kilojoules. I know that for every two moles of aluminum that react, I can produce 850 kilojoules of heat. So the key here, again, this is exothermic. So what that means is that my delta H is going to be a negative value. So instead of just writing 850, I'll probably have more success with this problem if I write negative 850. So now we've got negative 850 kilojoules. That's it. We are looking for kilojoules so we can stop. And we plug this in. We're going to get a negative value, and the answer is 158 kilojoules. That is probably the easiest way to approach this. If it's on the right-hand side, when you're plugging it in, put a negative. If it was on the left-hand side over here, 
then you would keep it positive. So that's where these delta H values come into play. Um, another thing that you could look at, notice in your problem, it says emitted. So right away, you should be able to look at that and say, ah, delta H, it's going to be negative. If it said something about absorbed, you know that your delta H value is going to be a positive. But your final answer really has to reflect that positive or negative, or you will get it wrong. So um, that is it.